Welcome to another edition of the BNFT Chat. My name is Norban Akwaifo. Today, we are speaking to Celestine Faconer. She is the African Research Analyst for the First National Bank. And she will be talking to us today about the economy and all the other things they have found out as a research group and how we can even move the economy forward. Ooh, I would say your sister bank in South Africa, Stambik, also projects 6% for us. What are you seeing? that all these economists are not seeing? For my biggest reason is that the, the, the growth projections that we have are based on oil prices increasing, production increasing, etc. However, we must remember the oil prices aren't increasing significantly. And oil production is a far cry still from where Nigeria and Angola, the amount that they produce. But my biggest thing is fiscal consolidation. Um, the government is very well aware, even though they've made lots of promises in their campaigning, that they cannot overspend and that they still need to keep that fiscal consolidation at the, the head of their um, policy making. So that is why we believe that growth will not expand significantly as what the government thinks it would. And so because of that, you think that we cannot grow at that 6.3% we are projecting for 2017? We will one day, but not 2017. I think it's too early. It comes from... Um, a much lower rate than we've uh, seen last year of about, what was it, 3.6% growth in last year. So to jump from 3% to about a double 6%, um, to me, is a bit over-optimistic. I think we should realize that, yes, we are definitely in a recovery period, but not, as we see in the rest of Africa, it's not going to be a significant recovery yet. Let's now come to inflation targeting. Many economists have said that this is good for us as a country. You are doing the same thing in South Africa, but you say, don't do it in Ghana <laughs> because it's not going to help you. You've made nonsense of it in your presentation. So my point is that in South Africa, inflation is both cost and demand side driven. But we have seen over the past few years, in fact, in, since the 2000s, that inflation in Ghana is driven by cost push pressures. Um, if you have cost push pressures, the, the movement of the monetary policy rate is almost why, why it won't help. Um, it is when there's demand-led pressures that a monetary policy rate will help even more. Very good example in the 2000s when we saw interest rates were very high, inflation was very high. Um, in 2011, when we saw inflation being relatively low, your monetary policy rate was quite low. That doesn't make sense. The one should go the other way around. So that is why I'm saying inflation targeting is not necessarily the wrong thing to do, but I think the central bank needs to, to balance it more with growth targeting. Growth is what we need at the moment after coming out of a two-year spiral of growth across Africa. So we need to boost the growth. We need to boost the private sector. And I know that might be your next question. The, the private sector is being crowded out by too high interest rates. And the only way we can bring that down is bringing the cost of funding down, bringing your monetary policy rate down. But somebody will say that, I mean, in as much as you want to do growth targeting, one of the key things that must come down has to do with the inflation that we have currently at 13.2. You yes. know, and you're projecting that it will go to around 10.3 or so mm. as we get into 2018, thereabout. Yes. Yes. And so why won't the central bank remain with the inflation targeting and then later think of, okay, what are the other factors that we should look at in terms of sparing on growth in the country? Absolutely, I understand what you're saying. But the thing is, with inflation coming down now, it is mainly driven by base effects. It's not driven by necessarily fundamentals that's happening from an inflation pressure, inflationary pressure perspective. That has a part to play, but it's mostly base effects why it's coming down. Now, a lot of people might think in the market that inflation is coming down because monetary policy is tight. That's not the real 100% the reason. It's coming down due to base effects. So, yes, inflation is doing better. Um, yes, we have seen the monetary policy rate being um, cut by 200 basis points, and that's a positive move. I do just think more needs to be done because your cost of funding is still high, regardless of that 200 basis points cut in the monetary policy so rate. So ask, what is, costing the, or what is causing the problem of cost of funding being so high for us in this country? Well, it's, it's just looking at the, the way you calculate your base rate. I think there is a, a fundamental flaw maybe in that. I do know that the central bank and the government is looking at 
changing these aspects. It hasn't been um, implemented yet. I haven't been in contact with them to know what they are looking at. Um, but it will go back to the fundamental economics, what drives the economy, what drives inflation, what drives lending, etc. Go back to the economics 101 and uh, just from the start and see what is actually driving um, the, the lending rates in this economy. So I think if we go back um, to the start, uh, we can see that the rates will need to be all just come back uh, down together. T-bill rates have come down to 19%, but yet we still see a significant large amount of um, commercial bank lending rates. So we should, they should match again. I see. Now let's look at, I mean, the world market commodity prices. In your presentation, you indicated that, yes, in as much as we've seen um, some stability and there are hopes for some growth or some prices going up you don't think the kind of recovery that is expected will be seen and so countries like ghana should not put their hopes in that why do you say that at this time well for me when there are signs of great recovery all the other projections that are coming for me the biggest issue is a supply glut so there's too much supply in the market there are countries that do not want to cut let's let's say for instance the oil price that does not want to cut their supply um, totally understandable if it was my government I also wouldn't want to so the supply glut is still there it will take a very long time to ease back out of the market to start spurring demand again um, China which is a large uh, consumer of oil um, is also not growing phenomenally well so all those aspects are driving us to believe that the oil price for instance will only recover by about five dollars um, in the next year that's, um, that's so serious. it's very low Just Yes, the supply is too much for us to see rates again above 100, let alone $80 per barrel. So it's going to be a very slow, but steady, it will, it will get there eventually, recovery. It, it won't be a significant one like we saw after the global financial crisis. When will we, when we see a greater push in terms of recovery? I don't think in the next five years. You don't think in the next no. five years? In the event of a decline again, what should country like Ghana that depends so much on commodities, you know, to be able to get into development, what should we be doing? Absolutely. Here lies the risk, not just for Ghana, it's for the rest of Africa. What if in a year's time there's another commodity price bust? That is a major problem because what the, the thing is what most African economies did when there's a, a commodity price boom, we spend because we've got the money. When there's a bust, we try and save, and we should actually do it the opposite way around. When things are good, that's when you must save. And when things are bad, then you can spend. Now we're sitting with a problem that most African countries spent all their money. We need fiscal consolidation. Now imagine a commodity price bust. You need even more fiscal consolidation. Even higher debt levels will come to the fore because um, these uh, markets need funding. I think it is a, a very high risk that every analyst should highlight to their clients. Um, if there is another commodity price downturn, I think Africa is in for a very, very bumpy ride. You talk about the fact that we should rather be saving when there's a boom and then be spending when there is not. Mm. But somebody will say, that is where your people need development. You need sure. to be able to let them see the, the corresponding effect, development up to the boom or the earnings that you are getting. I think these economies must realize development is key. Chief. The noise, just minimize it for us, please. Thank you. No problem. Okay, so just answer the question. We'll be, we'll be Wait, what, what was the question again? I mean, I was talking about the fact that, I mean, you talk about... Oh, yes, boom. saving and... When there's a boom, we should rather be saving and then we should be spending when, you know, there's that glut or there's that decline in yes. the system or there's a best in the system. Well, how does that work? Because most of your countrymen, or in Ghana, people are looking at the fact that there's a boom. And so we should see greater development, corresponding effect of it. So the, we, we do know a key f uh, problem in Africa is savings. We don't save. So I am definitely all for development. Infrastructure building, that is what gives our growth rates the boost that we got in the past decade. But we've spent too much. So yes, I've no, I've, I know I've made a, a big statement of save during the good periods and spend during the bad. Um, it must be balanced. I'm not saying 100%, 0%. It must be balanced. Um, we need to improve our savings. Um, industrial development must happen throughout 
bad cycles and good cycles. And that is where savings for an economy will help with those areas. Okay, now let's move away from that and look at issuing of euro bonds. Our government has issued the longest in 15 years. I mean, we've seen, we've seen that being issued quite recently. Mm. And there have been that debate that should we rather even issue local bonds or foreign bonds? You have made nonsense of the issuance of euro bonds because you think that there's that test from investors across the world because countries are not issuing. Mm. And you would wish that we don't even issue at all. Why? Well, for me, um, I don't think investors are taking into consideration the risk component associated to Africa, not just Ghana, to Africa. We've actually seen that the risk premium is not really reflected in the yields that come out when these bonds are being issued. Um, and we've seen it for a number of years now, and this year is also a stark realization that it is still holding. A very good example, Nigeria, issued the other day a Eurobond, it was eight times oversubscribed. While, while Nigeria is battling with a recession, uh, while it's battling with currency, uh, currency um, problems, so, and then it, it, it got to a yield of about 9.5%, and again, eight times oversubscribed. It just shows me that investors are still very much looking after, uh, or running after yield, and also there's a supply uh, constraint of euro bonds in our market. So of course, any euro bond that comes out and you can get a good yield, an investor will take it up. I don't want uh, governments like Ghana to fall in the trap of, well, euro bonds are performing well now, let's get into it. Because essentially, one day the market will correct. One day the investors will see, okay, maybe we should rather look at economic fundamentals than euro bond supply. Um, and that's the day when you will see that the, these governments will have to pay a premium and pay more interest etc so it's it's more for me to we shouldn't fall in that trap of people are investing in our country because of the good economy they're actually investing because they want yield somebody will also say that i mean euro bonds <coughs> there because the fdis are, are not coming the channels mm. are drying up Absolutely. So we s uh, sat in a two-year glut of commodity prices. Um, we are actually in the, the longest bus period of commodity prices since the 1990s. So totally understandable. All your typical foreign exchange inflows have dried up. Um, donor funding is drying up in certain countries. So yes, I can, I can understand that you would want to go to the Eurobond market or to your local market um, to start um, getting funding or to get funding. Um, however, do it at a reasonable pace. Uh, we should realize that the debt levels of Ghana has gone above 75%. I do not think with the growth rate that we are expecting at First National Bank that it will come down below 70% in the past, well, I would say in the next three to four years. So we're still sitting with a high debt situation. So rather, I think we should bring the key idea here that I want to bring up from our presentation today is that we must involve the private sector more. Um, we are, the government is it's being crowded out. The economy is crowding out the private sector. And the private sector is who we need. Let's look at our debt levels in this country. You talk about the fact that, yes, 75% to GDP, very, very high, even than Africa, which is doing around 49%, mm. I guess. I mean, how are we going to be able, from where you sit, to drop these levels? Because the government is looking at doing 70 uh, at the end of... Uh, 2017 and mm. possibly even bring it even further down they wanted to bring it down to below 70 this year and exactly. unfortunately yes from what happened over uh, in the previous budget that was overspending unfortunately um, the new government is sitting with a higher than expected gdp level so i do think the government will have to change their um focus their target of where the the, the debt level will go um, and also with that, if you, they, they should structure debt coming from foreign and local. They shouldn't depend on foreign too much. They shouldn't depend on local too much. So it must be a very a good combination. So you should be looking at issuing local bonds than even foreign bonds. I'm, I'm, I'm wanting more to, to get funding from other places other than issuing from a foreign and a domestic perspective. But if that is the case, I'm not saying the one should be more than the other. It should just be balanced. Every country has their own balance What's of like where it should be. That you would look at? Oh gosh, that's a very tough question. Um, difficult to, to answer because um, we are aware that uh, I am aware that governments obviously want to first um, 
pay the debt or for their local um, uh, funding um, rather than for the, the foreign funding. So I think your local debt is more pressure on the, the economy or on the, on the governments um, to be able to pay these arrears or not arrears, rather pay the, the interest back. So I would say, I can't even give you a number. 50-50 would have been ideal in any, in any country, but that's not the case um, with this. But we, we do know that the central bank is um, definitely looking at bringing the, the, the debt level down. I believe they would. And you've got a new government who wants to show... And a new governor as well. And a new governor who wants to show that we are here for the, for the economy. Yes, we know we must fiscal do fiscal consolidation but at the same time you want to industrialize so you are sitting with such a difficult situation i feel very sorry for the new government because it's it's pairing up you want to diversify with we don't have the money to One diversify to factory, yes CHS for all. fantastic I mean, these, these are policies that they want to actually look at wonderful policies but if you've got so the money I would say to some extent, some of the policies are achievable. Um, but I do also think that the IMF will come in and also say, listen, uh, you can't uh, spend on all these aspects that you want. I think they would have to start prioritizing which ones are more important for them than others. The, the last, uh, but not the least, uh, let's look at the CD and its performance. First quarter of the year, it was hell, if <laughs> I would describe it. Yes. I mean, the free fall of the CD was felt. Absolutely. In all aspects of the economy, uh, but some way, somehow, it recovered quickly and we're seeing it holding its own against major currencies like the dollar, um, the British pound and then the EU yes. in, in the country. What do you see of our currency? I think, um, I've mentioned it this morning, I think the CD is very sentiment driven. So any good news, any bad news has a, has a strong effect on the SEDI. However, luckily the SEDI is a managed uh, currency or managed float. So if it, if it goes to the extreme, um, we do know that the central bank will intervene or intervene is a bad word, I mean help uh, the currency from being so unstable. However, what if you sit with a very low reserves? What if the inflows haven't been very strong? And that's been the situation in Ghana. Um, what if you have a fiscal overspending, what we've seen since uh, 2012? All of this has affected the SEDI. But what I can tell you is that in the next two years, our view is that the SEDI will be relatively stable. The SEDI has a natural depreciatory trend because your dollar demand is always stronger than your dollar supply because we, the imports are still very strong. Um, so we will see a slight depreciation towards the end of the year. But what is going to help? Sentiment. We see foreign direct investment coming in because of the sentiment. We see people wanting to come into the bond markets. So that will help. Um, your second um, aspect is looking at um, your FX flows will come be stronger from an oil perspective. Um, and then, of course, we've got the IMF helping. We've got the Cocoa Bot syndicated loan. We might have another euro bond. You never know. I hope not, but you never know. Um, so we do have enough funds over the next two years to keep the currency stable. I see very finally, business environment, what are your clients or investors saying as far as Ghana is concerned? Is this um, one good place to invest or this is a place where they would not want to put their money? Well, let's look at, we, we have a publication called Where to Invest in Africa that's ranking exactly what you're asking. Who are the best places to invest in? And Ghana is number four. So we're still very happy Ghana being in the top five. We truly believe it. It's not just the numbers showing it. We used to it. be number five last We year, used to so. be number five. Um, I must admit, we didn't move to number four, or Ghana didn't move to number four because they did better. Other countries just did worse, unfortunately. Okay. But I do suspect that Ghana will remain in the top five because they are going to, from here on out, they are going to do better. Um, so that's a, a complete positive. The only thing is that we have noticed from our clients, the biggest problematic factor of doing business here is cost of funding. It's too expensive. And until that is resolved, we are not careful and we might slip? I don't, I don't necessarily think we will slip, but it will be um, because, again, other countries are just doing worse than Ghana. That's Ghana saving grace. But if Ghana changes that, I believe that they can over overtake a Morocco or an Egypt as being one of the better... Possibly your countries, South Africa. Oh, 
how 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 can we keep number one if we're acting like we are at the moment? <laughs> no, Our economy I mean, not doing Zuma very is doing well. All sort of things, changing yes. finance ministers and asking a lot of people to go home. Yes. So regardless of the political situation, it's just making policy uncertain. Um, we do know South Africa is still a fantastic investment destination, but policy uncertainty drives investment uncertainty, and we must remember that. Um, I do think we still we might still keep our number one spot, but we must be careful. Well, uh, thank you very much, Celeste, for <laughs> speaking you. to us on the BNFT chat. It's thank been you. nice speaking to you. Thank we you hope very that much. next year when you come, there will be Ghana would have moved to maybe number two. Of course. Hoping to unseat South Africa. If you give me money, I'll put them to number two. <laughs> <laughs> well, we just spoke to Celestine Faconer. She is the African Research Analyst for First National Bank. My name is Novana Kwahevod. Join us in another edition next time.